is the Silver Star Nation Dallas Cowboys Draft Special. I knew Mike McCarthy before he ever walked through these doors. And I knew it from a lot of different directions. So that while our time together initially talking about this job was meaningful, so much more went into how and why he's sitting at this table today. So I do want to introduce you to the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Mike McCarthy. Back on January 7th, Mike McCarthy was officially introduced as the Cowboys head coach. That seems like a long time ago. Well, now McCarthy is preparing to go through his first draft with Dallas. Babe Laufenberg and Mickey Spagnola join us. Babe, how big of an impact will Coach McCarthy have on this draft? At the opening press conference, uh, the Cowboys said McCarthy will have as much input into the draft as any coach that they've had. Now, of course, Jimmy Johnson was here uh, in those first five years of ownership here in 1989, starting in 89, and he obviously had a huge part in so many of the players that were drafted at, at that time. One thing I think that gets neglected a little bit, Jason Garrett has been a big part of the Cowboys draft success uh, as of late. He was a big voice in that room, kind of stated what he wanted. If you looked at it, they were all, without question, guys who had played at big schools, played in big games, and played for a number of years. When they went away from that, Taco Charlton probably being the most glaring example, who only started as a senior, and then Tristan Hill last year in the second round, uh, who didn't start at all, basically, uh, his last year, uh, they got into trouble. So, Mickey, what do you see from McCarthy in terms of the draft? I think he'll be one of the head coaches uh, that has a big voice in the draft. Babe, you mentioned Jason Garrett. If you look at when the Cowboys drafts turned around, it was when Jason Garrett became the head coach in 2010. They rebuilt the offensive line with first-round draft choices in that group. They rebuilt the wide receiver position. They rebuilt the running back position. Uh, he had a heavy hand in the draft that people didn't recognize. So to me, the three coaches previously that had a big hand in the draft, Jimmy Johnson, and this is after Jerry bought the team, Bill Parcells, and Jason Garrett. And I think Mike McCarthy wants to be part of the draft. He wants to have his voice heard. And I think the type of player they select will have his imprints on it, like they've done so far, Wes, on the defensive line, signed two bigger, larger defensive tackles, mm. that that's not what the Cowboys were looking at before. So I think you'll see things like that, Wes, go on in this draft. Well, Mickey, how tough is it for the new staff and all the obstacles they're facing in preparing for this year's draft? Yeah, this is probably the worst season for five teams to have new head coaches because you're getting new staff that don't know the players. They don't know their own players. And I think self-scouting is as much importance going on in the offseason than anything else. And they really haven't got to meet all the guys if you look at the Cowboys specifically. Uh, so, uh, and in the draft process, now they're doing these virtual interviews uh, sort of conducting the interviews like we're uh, taping this show. Uh, but it's another thing to be next to the guy and talk to him. The scouts have done that. Some of the personnel people have done it, but the coaches haven't been able to grab, get their hands around a lot of these guys since the combine. So that's what makes this draft a little bit more difficult, I think, for new staffs. Babe? Hey, I, I think it's going to be an interesting draft from that standpoint, Mickey, exactly to the point you were talking about, these coaches have not had a lot of face-to-face -face time with these guys, some of it virtually none. There were a few pro days before basically the country and the NFL was shut down. There were a few pro days where they were on college campuses, but very few. Uh, the other thing, though, is I am going to be very interested to see if this actually becomes a draft where teams hit on more guys than they used to. And I say that because now, what are you basing everything on? You're basing it on the tape. And honestly, Wes, shouldn't we all along have said, well, to figure out what kind of player this guy is, why don't we just put on the tape and see what he did over the course of 12 games rather than one workout that's a really controlled workout 
on his college campus. Real, real quick, a follow-up for Babe and Mickey. Babe, you first. Could the Cowboys be at some sort of advantage in this? Because teams don't know what McCarthy wants to do or how he wants to draft. So maybe, you know, the teams can't figure out what they're trying to do and jump ahead of them and take a player they want. I wouldn't say that's an advantage. And what's interesting, too, is with Mike McCarthy, when he was in Green Bay, uh, Ted Thompson was GM, and he was the guy that took all the players. I I'm sure McCarthy had some input, but not the type of input that he's going to have here with the Cowboys. So that's one factor to be considered. The other thing is at least they do have Kellen Moore back, coming back as the offensive coordinator. So he's able to tell McCarthy a little bit when they look at tape and the other things, uh, here's what this guy can do, here's what this guy can't do. Defensively, Mickey, they don't have that advantage because virtually nobody is left on the defense coaching. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Mike Nolan's got to make himself more acquainted with the talent he has. And, and, and you're right. You can watch tape uh, of the games last year and get a feel for uh, some guys. But some guys that you might have to count on didn't get a lot of snaps last year. Uh, if, if you look at the, the Joe Jacksons. Uh, of the world, the guys that played a little bit defensive end, Dorrance Armstrong. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's hard to get a feel for those guys. You know, when we were talking defensive ends, uh, you know, you, I, I've seen a lot of people get excited. You mentioned Randy Gregory's uh, petitioning for reinstatement. They signed Alden, Alden Smith petitioning for reinstatement, but you really can't count on that. that that's got to be the icing on the cake. You, so they, they've got so much work to do, and it's just unfortunate for them that this offseason uh, is, is, is disappearing uh, as we speak, Wes. The Cowboys have the 17th pick. Mickey, there's a pretty important Cowboy that was selected in <laughs> the first round with the 17th pick. That should give Cowboys fans some optimism, right? Well, yeah, and if you're going to look at the history of that 17th pick in 1990 uh, that got him Emmett Smith, uh, Jimmy Johnson was doing everything in the world to try to draft Baylor's Ron Francis. And, and, and remember, they didn't have that 17th pick. They ended up trading up with Pittsburgh, a third-round pick to get to 17 to be able to take uh, Emmett Smith. But prior to that, they were trying to trade up into the top 10 so they can draft Francis. Uh, they couldn't get there, and one of the old scouts that they had at that time Walt Jaworski uh, got on the table and said, we got to take Emmett Smith. This is the real deal. And uh, their personnel director, John Wooten, worked out a trade uh, with Pittsburgh, and they took the second running back in the draft at 17, Emmett Smith. The first was Blair Thomas. And after mm -hmm. him, four running backs went off the board. Some of the best deals you make are the deals you never make. <laughs> More recently, Cowboys tried to go up and get Paxton Lynch couldn't do it. Denver took him, and West, they wound up with Dak Prescott in that draft. Worked out pretty good. Coming up next, we'll talk about the anticipation surrounding this year's draft. You are watching the Silver Star Nation pre-draft special.